So this is 2 Peter chapter 2, the scripture for the 21st of July. This second chapter of 2 Peter contains possibly the harshest words of condemnation we've had so far in our read-through of the New Testament in 2020. Uh, Peter is passionately against those who would co-opt the work of the church for selfish or evil means, even if they don't intend for it to be selfish or evil means. Anything that takes the church away from its singular focus on Jesus Christ and on preaching him living, crucified, and living again uh, is, is something that will do harm to the church ultimately, and Peter's against that. These people who are the false prophets Peter describes are of the same ilk as the savage wolves Paul discusses in Acts chapter 20, verse 29. I've linked our video to Acts uh, uh, from Acts 20 down below in the description, so you can check that out if you missed it. But these are the people in congregations who want the church to value something equal to or, or sometimes even above Jesus. Uh, you'll see a variety of different kinds of people like this, whether, whether that's people who value some sort of a political aim at the same level or above Jesus, or, or, or whether that's people who value some sort of faux unity, where we never fight, uh, and therefore we must all get along and must all be completely at peace. And, you know, any, any of you who've lived in a dysfunctional family know that that's not true. Uh, whether that's, um, you know, the comfort of a, of a faith and religion that doesn't demand anything of me today and putting that at the same level of Jesus. There are wolves that come in all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes they look innocent and sometimes they look threatening. So Peter then draws from Jude and uses several examples to demonstrate God's faithfulness to mete out justice and offer deliverance throughout history. And he begins with the rebellious angels that we see in, in Genesis 6, uh, going to the flood in Genesis 6 through 9, the judgment on Sodom and Lot's deliverance in Genesis 19. And using these as his backbone, he makes the argument that God has not forgotten us, uh, that God is about giving justice to the unrighteous and to the righteous alike and delivering those who are righteous. Um, and, and God will do this in time, even if God doesn't do it on our timelines. If God has been faithful since the beginning, we can trust God's faithfulness, even in the midst of an often unjust and cruel world. Peter has little hope for these false prophets, as we see in, in, toward the end of this chapter. While God absolutely loves human beings, and God was willing to die for them, some humans, by their actions deny over and over again the image of God that's been imprinted on their souls. They deny it so continuously and so completely that the most merciful course of action is to put them down like a rabid dog. That way they can't harm themselves or others anymore. And I think that Peter speaks this truth. Um, it, it's a truth that I, I think it, it strikes me harsh. I wish that this were not the case, that there were not people like this. And yet history proves to us that there are people, whether it's because they get power, whether it's because um, they've just made a habit of living in contradiction to what, what God would have, there are people who are so harmful to themselves and others that it would be better if the world were just rid of them. Uh, it, it, these are the individuals that practice stuff like slander, revelry, adultery, and greed over and over again. And, and these practices are things that injure our very souls. Peter uses the example of Balaam. Now, Balaam, if you've read the book of Numbers recently, you might remember that, that in Numbers, um, uh, I put down here chapter 12, but that can't be right. I think it's Numbers 23 uh, uh, or 22. Balaam comes up uh, to curse the Israelites. Uh, he's hired by a king, in fact, and um, on his way up to curse the Israelites, the angel of the Lord stops him and speaks through his donkey and says, essentially, like, Balaam, you're doing it wrong. And so Balaam goes, and, and having been confronted by God, he blesses the Israelites. But um, there are extra biblical sources that suggest that Balaam tried to um, undermine even his own prophecy later. Similarly, some people speak well about the church, offer a blessing to the church, but by their love of sinful behavior, they corrupt the local congregation. In ending this chapter, Peter suggested it would be it would have been better for people like this had they never found God, had they never been attracted to the church in the first place. 
by getting a little bit of truth about Jesus and then returning to their worldly lifestyles, they've been effectively inoculated from further discipleship. I wonder, how do you stay excited to grow in faith and to focus on Christ? That's all for 2 Peter chapter 2. Tomorrow, the 22nd of July, we'll look at 2 Peter chapter 3. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.